We've got death, destruction, drugs, torture. We've got all the, the things that the, that the cartels are doing. We've caught people from 130 different countries. We caught 14 of them who came in, uh, were on the terrorist watch list. Welcome back to The Kevin Roberts Show. This week, we're talking about the immigration crisis on our southern border. It's an issue that President Biden has not only failed to address, but has made worse. Having just moved from Texas, where I took many trips to the border, this issue is near to my heart. It should trouble every American, regardless of where they call home. Thanks to President Biden's border and immigration policies, or should I say lack thereof, the situation has spiraled out of control. Illegal immigrants aren't just streaming across our border in unprecedented numbers. In fact, our government is sending them all over the United States instead of sending them back home. We'll talk about this more with Congressman Brian Babin and the former head of U.S. Customs and Border Protection, Mark Morgan. If this is your first time watching The Kevin Roberts Show, welcome. For those of you returning, I'm grateful you've subscribed. Each week, we're diving into issues that matter to you with voices from across the conservative movement. And we're also equipping freedom lovers across the country with the tools they need to go on offense against the left. In just a little over a year, Joe Biden has created the worst immigration crisis our country has ever faced. When he came into office, he went to work immediately uprooting and upending so many effective policies that were working to keep our border secure. He halted the construction of the border wall on his first day in office, claiming that a wall wasn't a serious policy solution. Since then, three million people have tried to illegally cross our southern border, and more than half a million of that figure evaded Border Patrol. When there were reports about large, organized caravans of immigrants numbering in the thousands heading up from Central America, you'll remember that the Biden administration ignored the warnings. Border agents have been told to set illegal immigrants free inside the United States without giving them official notices to ever appear in court to determine if they're legitimate asylum seekers. The administration has even put them on buses and flights, dispersing them in the dark of night throughout the country. They do it without any notice to local communities, local governments, and law enforcement. Administration officials have lied about how poorly they've handled this still-growing situation. We've seen men, women, and young children trafficked across the border by violent smugglers and drug cartels who extort them, abuse them, and even kill them. Some who've tried to make the journey have died in the harsh Southwest conditions. Then there's the surge of deadly drugs like fentanyl, which have become a serious problem in cities and towns across our land. So how has Joe Biden's administration responded? I'm sorry to report, with dishonesty and neglect. And this is why I called for the resignation of Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas. And if he doesn't resign, Congress should impeach him. We have historic numbers of illegal immigrants flooding the southern border. All this increased criminal activity, from human trafficking to drug trafficking, accompanies it. Still, the Biden administration refuses to call it a crisis. Their claims about the border being closed are nothing short of ridiculous. What's more, much of our corporate media has unsurprisingly neglected this story. They failed to give the American people an accurate picture of just how bad things have become. These disastrous policies have sent a message to the rest of the world, a message that says America's borders are wide open. Lawbreaking is not only tolerated, but rewarded. Drug smugglers are wreaking havoc on our communities, causing record deaths in America. Terrorists are free to walk across our border. These things are unacceptable, and we must not allow this to continue. Today we'll be joined by someone who represents ground zero in this battle, U.S. Congressman Brian Babin from Texas. He'll provide more insights into how this crisis, specifically the surge of narcotics, has impacted his state and the entire country. But before we get to our guest, please remember to subscribe to The Kevin Roberts Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Please be sure to give the show a five-star rating while you're at it. Your ratings and reviews help us reach even more people with solutions for the biggest issues facing America. Stay with us. I'll be right back with Congressman Brian Babin. Fifty years ago, the Heritage Foundation was created to help conservatives save America from crime, inflation, communist aggression, and cultural decay brought on by left-wing coastal elites. The bad news is, leftists are screwing it up all over again. 
This means we're going to have to save America once more. And the good news is we can. Today, heritage is the tip of the spear for America's counteroffensive against the woke socialist left dominating Washington and poisoning our country. We're laying out the facts, leading the debates, and setting the agenda to protect our elections and our border, to rein in big tech and rescue kids from woke schools, and to help Americans rebuild a strong economy and even stronger families. After what we've seen the woke left become in recent years, we know the days of reacting to them are over. From Congress to school boards to kitchen tables, conservatives need to go on offense every day, stay on offense, and win the fight for the next generation. Congressman Brian Babin, thanks for joining the show. Great to be with you, Kevin. We've done some hunting together in South Texas. Yes, We've uh, told stories. Some of them are even true. <laughs> Today, we can have some fun, but we've got a, a really serious topic, and it's immigration, in particular, illegal immigration. Right. And I just want to thank you on behalf of not just all of us here at Heritage, but millions of Americans who are grateful for your courage on this difficult issue for everything you've done. So thank you for your service. Well, Kevin, thank you, and congratulations on your new position here at Heritage. Uh, uh, they couldn't have found a better better man. Man, I didn't even pay you to say that. Uh, no, you didn't. You don't need to pay me to say that. Well, that's kind of you. Yes, yes sir. Dr. Babin, which is your, your favorite title, probably other than dad and grandpa, right? Right. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, great, great country dentist, which is to say this is a guy who knows how to get stuff done. Why does the left love illegal immigration so much? Because I think it, it fits their agenda mm -hmm. of replacing uh, the middle class American voter populace. Uh, this also, it, it, it really kind of conforms to their strategy in, in, in multi-pronged ways because uh, not only do they bring people in here by the millions, over two million last year alone, uh, they get them on government benefits they put them on welfare. They put them on free health care, free education, um, uh, exempt them from uh, some of the things that are, that are really levied against us, such as uh, vaccine mandates. You know, uh, out of these two million people that came across last year, we think there might have been up to a 10 to 15 percent COVID rate. But how do we know? Because they weren't testing them. They weren't right. mandating they get their vaccinations. And so I think they get people that are uh, immediately uh, thinking that the, uh, being uh, dependent on the government is the right way to go. And so that's a, that's a new voter base. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. I've had plenty of friends and, and mutual friends at that from Texas ask, what's this about? In other words, they understand that people want to come to America. And all of these mutual friends, Texans especially, say, we, we want people to come here legally. Right. We want them to be part of our society. We, we love that so many of them are hardworking. The, the issue is, though, that it's illegal. And so the left is making that happen. And they have asked me, these friends, is it to enlarge the voter base of the American left? Well, you can't look at it any other mm -hmm. way, Kevin. I, I think that, uh, you know, I, I, I have a daughter-in-law who's a naturalized citizen mm -hmm. from Brazil, married right. to my son. And I, I'm all for all for legal immigration, but it's got to be—it's got to be done legally. And uh, the way the way this is going now, the Democrats absolutely, I think, have a, stra a grand strategy mm -hmm. uh, to bring in uh, millions of, of people illegally, uh, and then they immediately put them or attempt to put them. We've seen legislation like this uh, this year already that we've—I've uh, proudly voted against. Put them on a pathway to citizenship which enfranchises them to have the vote. And now some of our states, including uh, uh, New York, I think just this year, mm -hmm. uh, legalized uh, in their local and state elections to have illegals vote there. California's had it for, for years. Many other states are trying it. And, they're, and with, uh, with uh, H.R. 1 and H.R. 6, these uh, monstrosities of, the, of voter uh, bills that the Democrats have come, come up with this, this past uh, session uh, to take over a, federal, a federalization of our local, mm -hmm. uh, our state-controlled election processes. And I think that is simply uh, so that they can control it uh, and have a majority in perpetuity. 
Thanks for that response. <clears throat> it makes me think of a follow-up question, which I'm sure our audience would enjoy hearing your response to. And it's often a question posed from people, even conservatives, who don't live in border states, where they say, Kevin, we understand that illegal immigration is a problem, but isn't that just an issue for California, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas? What's your response? My response is every state is a border state now. When you have... I think, I think the government has spent about $350 million this past year on transportation uh, uh, costs to get let people come across the southern border, mm -hmm. whether it be Texas, or Arizona, New Mexico, or California, and fly them or bus them all over our country. Uh, they got caught red-handed. Uh, there was a, a whistleblower, uh, I think it was in Westchester, New York, uh, just saw troops of single adult male illegal aliens getting off of aircraft. And incredibly, the troubles that you and I, we fly a lot, you know, going back and forth to Texas, uh, up here to D.C. We have to show all kinds of identification and verification and boarding passes, et cetera, et cetera. And these illegal aliens use their arrest warrants mm -hmm. at the border in order to, to get on these airplanes. TSA has waived that for them. And uh, that I just, tried that with TSA, but it, it no, just never works. No, it doesn't works. work, does it? No, <laughs> and you're a member of Congress. I'm sure it doesn't work for you. Well, not at all. So, I, you know, the, there are rules for thee, but not for me. That's the mm -hmm. way that works. And they, this fits their plan. They want it. And my heart goes out to people who are trying to better their lives. Of course. You know? But the law is the law. That's right. If, you have, if you're claiming asylum, that is, that, that, that is a strict Mm -hmm. a case of law and uh, about 80 to 90 percent of these people are claiming credible fear and seeking asylum when they do show up for their for their court hearings uh, 80 to 90 percent of them are found to be bogus uh, but it, nevertheless uh, you know the the, the democratic uh, regime under uh, President Biden is allowing these people to uh, to just fan out throughout the country and, mm -hmm. and to remain uh, by the by the by the hundreds and hundreds of thousands, if not millions, it's it's a sad state. I want to talk about solutions. I know that's something that you're interested right. in. Certainly here at Heritage, we believe in getting to solutions. But I think what's similar about our approach and yours is that we're not bashful. You're not bashful about calling a spade a spade. I mean, th this is an utter human and a disaster. It's a disaster with the rule of law. And so before we get to solutions, I want to talk about accountability. I want, to, okay. I want to talk about something that at Heritage we don't usually engage in, but this is just so catastrophic an issue. I want to play the blame game. And I want to place blame ultimately where the buck stops, which is on the desk of the President of the United States. Amen. But you and I have had some conversations about Secretary Mayorkas. If, in fact, conservatives win a majority in the U.S. House— a year from now, what's your sense about what will happen with Secretary Mayorkas? Well, we're demanding his uh, his uh, resignation right now. I mean, he he's, he's been pathetic. Mm -hmm. uh, he is he has absolutely violated his oath of office. Uh, he has demonized and, and thrown his own Border Patrol and his own ICE agents under the bus repeatedly. Um, he has gone down there and told them that he would never turn their back, quote unquote, on them. And uh, I think one of them uh, yelled out and said, uh, Mr. Secretary, you turned your back mm -hmm. on us the, the, the day you took office here. And so uh, it's, I, I think there has to be some accountability. There mm -hmm. absolutely does. And we've been in, con in conversations uh, at the highest levels in the Republican uh, conference. And uh, that is a plan that mm -hmm. uh, if he doesn't, uh, if, he do if we don't see uh, certain things happen uh, remedied, let's put it like that, uh, where he doesn't start obeying the law, enforcing the law, and uh, securing our border. He's supposed to be taking care of the national security and the border security of our country, and it is a complete joke. It's wide open. Uh, if we don't see these types of things, then there is a very good possibility that we will seek uh, his, his removal from office uh, through articles of impeachment. And, and unfortunately, the facts bear that out because he took an oath of office to uphold the rule of law, which right. includes border security. And, and wouldn't it be nice, Dr. Babin, if your colleagues on the other side 
even though we recognize there are some policy differences, maybe even different worldviews would recognize that the facts on the ground and the border simply are not good for anyone. They're not good for the people trying to come illegally. They're not good for the communities on the border. They're not good for us anywhere in the United States of America. But it seems as if Secretary Mayorkas is willfully neglecting his duties. Well, as, a, as the co-chairman of the House Border Security Caucus, mm. I've been down to that border numerous times. In fact, we've got a uh, another CODEL plan down there mm-hmm. in, the, in the very near future. And we have seen some horrifying things down there. We've seen things called rape trees where mm. the cartels will t- 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 demonstrate their brutality and, and, ho- and, and uh, uh, as a warning to other mm-hmm. uh, people who are wanting to, to come in that they better use the cartels and right. do what they say or you're dead uh, or you're uh, molested or you're raped or mutilated. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and we've we've seen the cartels completely empowered by this by this administration, totally empowered, to make up to uh, the, uh, the latest figure I've seen is 14 million a day mm-hmm. uh, on uh, human trafficking, uh, the drug the drug uh, uh, trade that's coming across the border is at all time highs. Uh, I'm, I'm a healthcare provider. I can tell you, drugs such as fentanyl. Uh, fentanyl belongs in the operating room. It doesn't mm-hmm. belong on the, you know, in the junior high schools. Uh, we've seen over a hundred thousand on all-time record, a hundred thousand plus Americans die of overdoses. Uh, not completely all from fentanyl, but mm-hmm. the large uh, majority of those deaths are from fentanyl and other narcotics uh, and uh, opioids. And it's simply because we have an open border now, and these mm-hmm. cartels have been empowered to to do their dastardly deeds, and Americans are dying because of it. And I'll tell you something else. Uh, we've, we've had briefings. Uh, the cartels are not just in Mexico. Mm-hmm. They're in the United States mm-hmm. of America. They're in Texas. They're even in Oregon. Mm-hmm. The cartels are running the illicit uh, marijuana growing uh, tr- uh, business up there in agriculture. Uh, and, and many of these states are, are trying to uh, get a handle so they can make money out of, mm-hmm. uh, you know, legal legalization of marijuana. And the cartels have moved right in. Yep. And they're putting pressure on landowners, on ranchers, on people that live in, these, in their southern cities, uh, especially down in the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, and it is absolutely terrible that American citizens cannot expect uh, the support of their own government and I'll, let me, can I add one more of thing, you Kevin, can. if you don't mind? The Constitution in Article 4, Section 4, states that the federal government is to guarantee each state a, a Republican form of government. Mm-hmm. And that's Republican as uh, with a small r, mm-hmm. not, not the Republican Party. Uh, and then secondly, to protect each state from invasion. Mm-hmm. Now, I would remind you that uh, uh, we've, we've got massive, terrible migration problems that are happening of refugees by the millions leave, trying to leave Ukraine, and terrible things are happening down there. And I think it's, it's, uh, it's up to two million now. Right. Hey, we had two million come in last year. That's right. It puts it in perspective. Migration from here. We've got death, destruction, drugs, torture. We've got all the the things that the that the cartels are doing we've caught people from 130 different countries uh coming in we caught 14 of them uh who came in uh, were on the terrorist watch list and i would remind all all of your viewers here that it took 19 of terrorists coming in uh, to our country uh, to perpetuate the worst uh, terrorist mm-hmm. attack in the history of our of our nation and so uh, Mayorkas, President Biden, uh, the radical wing of his party who controls the Democrats That's these right. days, uh, have put us in a jeopardy that we haven't seen in decades. Uh, and at the same time, well, putting policies in place that would take us uh, away from freedom and into into bondage to, to our federal government. No, oh, that's right. Socialism. I mean, it, 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 that's right. It really is part of a grand plan. So let's try to inject some optimism into the future. And by that, I don't, I don't mean, Brian, hollow optimism. Uh, this is the Heritage <coughs> Foundation. You're a serious member of Congress, health care provider before that, family man. You are focused on real solutions. And so if Republicans win a majority in Congress, 
what can we expect to see? Does it start with restoring funding for ICE? Is it, is it sort of uh, rejuvenating the funding for our, our frontline law enforcement officers? Absolutely. We've seen an attack. Mm-hmm. I mean, an absolute attack on our law enforcement officers all around the country, defunding them, demonization of them. By the secretary. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. By the president. Yep. And uh, also uh, encouraging uh, people of color uh, to basically uh, resist arrest. Right. Uh, and, uh, you know, you cannot have a, a country uh, of chaos and disorder like that without, without following the, you know, the, the laws of this nation. And uh, I can tell you that if we take the majority back, and I, I use if in a, because I think it's when we take the majority mm-hmm. back, I think we're going to see a red wave uh, wash over this nation in November. I think people are tired, and not just border issues and crime issues, but all across the board, the, the economic issues, the gas prices, uh, uh, the the claiming that that uh, parents who go before their school boards to complain are terrorists uh there's so many so many things that i issues that i believe uh, are concerning americans uh today and many of these americans concern are democrats themselves that's right and so i think we're going to see uh we're going to see a, a wholesale turning out uh, of this party in power today and I can tell you that uh, I, I serve on the on the National Security Task Force for for our. Uh, uh, we're supposed to be coming up with with plans and initiatives uh, that we can put into place yeah. after we take the take the majority back. There are other task forces out there. We're going to be we're going to be ready to go. <clears throat> Good. And it's uh, uh, it's something that uh, we cannot squander our majority. We we haven't been real successful in that in years past. And I've been serving four terms now. Uh, but we better deliver the goods for the American people, and I think we will. Yes, I, I, I think on behalf of Americans, and you don't have to hear this from me or Heritage, but y'all better. Amen. Because conservatives, myself <clears throat> included, all of us at Heritage included, the you know, one and a half million people who've supported Heritage over the last decade would say, we love conservatives, but we sure are frustrated that right. when conservatives are in power, they tend to be a lot squishier than when the left is in power. And we're just fed up with it. And I know I can tell you that straight right. because we're friends. You take no offense to it. But it leads to a very specific question, Brian. And it is, a couple of years ago, our side was in power in the House and Senate. We had a, a wonderful president on this issue in particular in President Trump, and we couldn't get an immigration plan done. What confidence do you have that that can happen Obviously, President Biden is likely to still be in office a year from now, even if you have Republican majorities in both chambers. What's your sense of the willingness of your colleagues to push for that kind of agenda? Well, what happens here? Let me let me in, in defense. And I, it's hard to defend you, squishiness. OK, sure. I, I, I really can't defend it, uh, quite frankly. But 95 percent of the American media is on the t- in the That's tank. Ex- that is true. Uh, for the liberal uh, socialist Democrats, no one likes to hear themselves called xenophobes, homophobes, mm-hmm. uh, racist, or anything like that. And um, even the most hardened conservative, it it it, it kind of gets on your yeah, skin. Yeah, because y'all are people. Exactly. And uh, but I can tell you that uh, we're going to be pushing forward with these uh, with these initiatives and and, and try to remedy some of these uh, issues that we're having. Uh, and irregardless of what happens, and, and quite frankly, we we we've got to unite. Mm-hmm. One of the worst things that uh, we've done in the past have uh, been in circular firing squads, and uh, have have various factions and wings of the Republican Party uh, sniping at one another. We cannot afford to do that. We cannot do that. The Democrats are. Uh, they are they're, they find themselves in a very strong pickle right now in that regard. Uh, but we've got to pull together. Mm-hmm. And uh, to do that, uh, we're going to have to obey uh, and abide by, I should say, uh, Reagan's rule. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, you know, if, you're, if your adversary or, or your, uh, your colleague is with you 80% of the time, then you need to stick together on that 80%. That doesn't mean you have to shut up. And you know, and and, uh, and swallow your pride, and uh, you know, and, co- and compromise your principles. Uh, but we've got to pull together. We've got to. Yeah. We've got to fix uh, health care. We've got to. We got to secure this border. We've got to maintain our military, 
and goodness gracious, it's going to take to get this cat back in the bag that we have on on uh, on foreign policy. The disaster that we that we saw begin with the, the Afghan withdrawal, and now culminating in this uh, debacle and horror that's going on in Ukraine. We're going we're going to have to reestablish uh, American leadership, uh, and I think that we can do that by holding the president accountable overriding his veto i'm hoping mm-hmm. and praying that the american people will give us a veto proof uh, majority uh and uh maintain america's supremacy in the world and go by our constitution family values mm-hmm. moral issues as well and in one year incredibly we have gone from the best economy in over seven decades to now we're in a disastrous uh, uh we find ourselves in a disastrous uh, position with, I mean, $7 gallon gasoline right here in uh, D.C. That's right. Uh, and out in California. And let me tell you something. When, when Texans are paying four fifty a gallon, uh, there's something wrong. Where we produce it and refine it. I represent more refineries and chemical plants That's than anybody right. else in the whole country. And, uh, and then we, you know, here's Biden telling us, okay, you've, you've pushed me far enough. We'll stop buying Russian oil. Uh, let's let's see if we can go to the Iranians. Let's see if we can go to Venezuela to buy oil. No, let's go to Texas. Let's go to Louisiana. Let's go to Oklahoma and New Mexico and North Dakota and uh, and Pennsylvania and other oil producing states. Let's turn our spigot back on. It can't be done immediately. Right. But there are some things that this president could do, or I should say, undo that he's yes. done, uh, and, and start granting permitting, uh, you know, for for uh, drilling and, and production. Uh, we've got LNG pro, uh, projects that are on the books. I think there's six right now mm-hmm. uh, that are uh, been, being held back. Uh, let's permit. Let's let's go in and get the Europeans. Let's get them off of Russian that stinking Putin gas. You know, let's put them on American. Let's put them on Texas gas, which happens to be cleaner anyway, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So you would think the environmentalists among them would would say, "Hooray! Let's go get this done." We have the cleanest, best uh, production methods and and, and the lowest uh, carbon footprint of any other nation on earth. That's why it's so stunning that the the, mm. the Democrats and the environmental extremists would shut us down and put us on dirty. Yeah. more emissions around the world. Do they think that we're breathing different air, you know, from the other side of the well, other planet? It, it speaks to the larger point that really, even though it, it used to sound conspiratorial, all of this is intentional. <clears throat> this is right. this is all part of a plan to undo the American economy, the American way of life. The tragedy is that we see what's happening in Ukraine. We see what's happening with the open border. The effect that that has on human society really is tragic. It is terribly tragic. And then trying to get our message out. That's why I'm so thankful mm-hmm. for Heritage. Uh, getting our message out uh, is, the, is the key, I think, to, to educating the American people. Because as I said earlier, 95% of the media is, is, is on the other side. No, it's an excellent point. Yeah, yeah it's and, an excellent and point. And we've got, we've got to make sure that people understand what's at stake here. And, and the censorship that we're seeing out of the, out of the major media, out of big tech, uh, shutting down even on our Facebook, uh, we haven't been, or, or and on on Twitter, we haven't been banned yet. <laughs> I say yet, but we're getting warnings when yeah. we say something about vaccine mandates right. or something of that to that 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 effect. They they have a little blurb down there on Facebook that says, "Go check at this site." Yeah, you know, uh, obviously it's saying uh, disagreeing with yeah, what we're sure. saying. You know. Uh, but the, the big, the big tech uh, companies are are also in the tank for the Democrats, and uh, I, I really worry about digitalization mm-hmm. of the news, of our currency, of everything else, because as we as we go towards this, number one, the Chinese are right there with us, may even be ahead of us in some of these, like um, you know. Uh, uh, AI, uh, right. artificial um, uh, intelligence, intel- yeah. artificial intelligence, uh, and we we need to be be very careful about that. And if we don't have American uh, technology that is looking out for the freedoms and liberties of American citizens, and and in fact working against us, we're in we're in a bad bad position. Well, we are. We and are. That's why Section Two Thirty needs to be uh, repealed and modified. Well, uh, um, I agree with you there. And and as a recent major statement in in the form of a paper that Heritage put out, that and then some. So we're we're with you there. So 
we need to let you get back to the business of taking back this country, Congressman Babin. So I'll ask one final question. Sure. Uh, you, you punch hard, figuratively. Heritage punches hard, figuratively, all in the spirit of calling a spade a spade so we can get to solutions. So we're grateful for your candor. But I always want to make sure when we have conversations like this, which has just been terrific, that we close in a spirit of optimism. And I know you well as a friend, kind of a kind of a spiritual brother or mentor, that you want to do that too. And so why, in spite of all of the challenges that we face as a country, did you wake up today optimistic about the future of America? Well, I tell you, it's my Christian faith. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is that is it in a nutshell. Because when I wake up in the morning, I generally say my prayers for um, you know the people that need praying sure. for uh, those that are that are sick. But I, our nation is not healthy right now, mm-hmm. and so we uh, I'm praying very hard uh, to uh, to our Creator right. uh, to show a, a guiding light uh, to those of us who. Um, who are up here trying to make the laws or trying to keep laws from being made uh, on occasion as we have lately. Uh, and I think that I'm optimistic mm-hmm. and, and I have 17 grandchildren. <laughs> so you have to be. <laughs> Absolutely. And I'll, I'm, I'm up here fighting a battle for them and for your kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I, I believe that, uh, that America's best days can easily, easily be in front of us, but it's going to take American citizens standing up at getting educated Fighting back for what we believe. Let me tell you something. If our, if our founding fathers had said, you know what, it's just not worth this, man. I'm going to lose my farm. I'm going to lose my plantation if I, uh, you know, go against mm-hmm. these British. Uh, they didn't do that. They they put it all on the line, that's and right. that's what we've got to do. I'd rather, I'd rather be six feet under than living under a socialist dictatorship. Amen. Yeah. So there you have it. Well, my friend, Congressman Brian Babman, thanks for being with us. Yes, sir, Kevin. Thank you. Congratulations on what you're doing today, and thank you to Heritage. Yeah, people like you make it easy. Amen. Next up to address this issue is Mark Morgan, former acting commissioner of U.S. Customs and Border Protection under President Trump. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Big tech is out of control. If they can silence the sitting president, what can they do to you? The Heritage Foundation has been on the front lines fighting for free speech. We spotlight big tech censorship, demand reform, and help you fight for your rights. Heritage was the first conservative organization to reject big tech's money because this is too important. We won't be silenced. Welcome back, everyone, for our final segment of the show. Joining me to dig deeper into the Biden border crisis is a man who's been on the front lines of protecting America's borders. He was part of the team that dramatically reduced illegal immigration numbers under President Trump. Please welcome to the show the former commissioner of U.S. Customs and Border Protection and current visiting fellow here at Heritage and my friend, Mark Morgan. Mark, thanks for being here. Kevin, thanks for having me. So question I've asked you a lot, uh, both in shows like this, but also privately as we've had conversations over the last few years. Give us a status update. So for, for the audience, they know that there's a terrible situation at the border. They know that it's just a catastrophe in every way. You actually know the details. You've been down there. You're an expert. You are someone that they know they can trust. And so give us the update. So basically what what has happened is the Biden administration was inherited what I feel is the most secure border in our lifetime. And with a stroke of a political pen, Mm -hmm. he basically destroyed the secure air border and handed it over to the cartels. And it's not just about illegal immigration, although we've seen that. I keep telling people that that in the first 12 months, we saw 3 million migrants try to break into the country illegally. We apprehended 2 million of them, 600,000 got away, and 400,000 of them turned back to avoid Mm -hmm. apprehension. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. And you and I have talked a lot, Kevin. It's, It's not just about illegal immigration. It's first and foremost about border security. Mm-hmm. But when you open your borders up to, to one threat or one crisis, you're opening our borders up to the vast set of complex threats we're facing. It's like human trafficking, drugs, and the list goes on. It really does. I mean, in fact, the, the list goes on so long, it, it starts to become depressing. You it and I does. were talking about that as we were walking in. We don't mean that to be discouraging to our audience, but true. It, it's true. They know that if they watch the news and certainly if they've been down to the border, as you have so many times and I have a few. We know the Biden administration isn't going to fix this because this this is a political calculus they've made. We know that those in Congress who want to fix it are in the minority, but is there anything that they could do creatively that could help? 
Yeah, I think there's two things. So first, before I go with what Congress could do, mm-hmm. I think let's look at what states can do. Yeah, uh, states. At the end of the day, I think you're right, Kevin. That this administration has doubled, quadrupled down on their open yeah. border policies. They're not changing. We all know that. And so, it really, is uh, unfortunately left up to the states to fill that gap and that void left by this administration. We need more states like the great state of Texas to do what Governor Abbott is doing. Uh, right now, I think Texas is doing more than any other mm-hmm. state uh, in this country. But look, right now, what we need to do like, for example, the, the spending bill that, that, that unfortunately just passed. Uh, look, I think they had a great opportunity there to drive significant change through appropriations. And um, I think it fell short. Mm-hmm. I mean, basically, at the end of the day, I think what, what happened was they, they gave Secretary Mayorkas an 11% raise mm-hmm. uh, for DHS to continue their open border policies. There's nothing in there that's actually going to take a step positively towards securing our borders. And that's unfortunate. No, it is. And I just want to hang on that and because and, I know you don't mind. And, and I hope that our friends on Capitol Hill, and they are friends who are right-minded on this issue, don't mind the constructive criticism. Right. But Heritage and our, our 501c4 Heritage Action, we've taken a lot of heat today for being opposed to that omnibus bill. Now, I don't care about the heat because right. it was the righteous position, and it was the righteous position because of what you just said. And, and I just wanted for our audience to understand the reason we did is because all our conservative members of Congress had to do was stop the train, That's it. not even for a day, but for eight hours or 12 hours. But House leadership, decidedly not on our side, knew that they could try to wait them out. And this is precisely the kind of thing that the minority can do in Congress. It's, it's, it's part of our system that our founders enshrined. And so it's sort of a long-winded way of, of getting your assessment of between now in March 2022 and Election Day, when we think that perhaps we'll have a conservative majority, Am I right in saying there could be other opportunities for the minority in Congress to actually, through appropriations, control what happens? I think that's right. And, and I, I don't see your response as long-winded at all. I think it was accurate in what you mm-hmm. said. And look, I think there's a couple avenues. One, we can we can really have, you know, on day one in 2023, accountability. Mm-hmm. We should be ready to go with, with hearing after hearing uh, prepared and the witnesses and what questions we're going to ask to actually hold the Biden administration accountable. That's something they can do on day one. And again, uh, there are other avenues they can take, again, through the budgetary process, mm-hmm. through appropriations, to also bring back common sense policies that's actually going to secure our borders and protect this country. I mean, I know we talk about this, some stats, and we had a panel today. Right. I mean, just drugs alone, Kevin. Drugs alone in a 12-month period, 100,000 drug-related deaths in a 12-month period. That's more deaths than Americans suffered with, with uh, Vietnam and the Afghan and, and Iraq wars combined. Right. You would think that that would be an American issue. I, I think you said a, a human being issue. Yeah. That shouldn't be a right or left issue. I don't understand why we can't collectively get together to secure our borders to stop, for example, 100,000 drug overdoses. Well, it's true. And, and if you think about how sort of uh, paranoia filled the media coverage of COVID was with all of the deaths and, and God bless the, the family members of those people who died from COVID. Obviously that's tragic, but the point is we ought to be doing the same thing with the fentanyl crisis, right? That's right. And it leads me to the question, what, what's your assessment? I'm going to ask you to give them a letter grade. What's the letter grade you would give the Biden administration regarding the transparency of data that they're providing to the American people. Absolutely F. And look and at an F. And not F. even a D minus. Uh, but D minus. And, and, and I can say that. I had no idea you are going to ask that question, right. and my answer came that quick. And, be, and here's why, Kevin, because I was there. Mm-hmm. I, I, I knew what we did. Let me give you a couple examples. So as the commissioner, I actually held a press conference every 30 days and invited everyone. Uh, the, uh, including media folks from the right and the left, right? And I took incoming from both sides, right. but we were very transparent. Mm-hmm. We opened up the books. We, we opened up everything, and we took every single question coming in. Uh, and this administration stopped that. If you go to their website, we had actually created a website that was actually interactive, and you could get data there. I'm seeing a lot of the data that we were producing there, it's it's all been pulled off. Yeah. I'll give you another example. Uh, the, the the individuals that the Border Patrol have apprehended on the southwest border that are on the FBI's uh, TSDB, the Terror mm-hmm. Screening Database, well, early on, when when one of the sectors caught two uh, individuals from, from Yemen, the, the sector chief tweeted it out, and then quickly, within a few hours, it was pulled off. 
And now they, they, they mention operation security reasons, why they're not being transparent with the American people with respect to the national security threat that we face. It's a joke. It, it, there's it no reason why they can't be transparent with the American people on that. Well, that's just right. And, and to that point and the earlier point you made about this, it, it is political, but it shouldn't be. Heritage is part of this coalition, along with Texas Public Policy Foundation and others called the Border Security Coalition. Yeah. You and I are members of that. But the point is, in the early days of that, when you were in the administration, there were a couple of instances when that coalition needed some updated data. And you know what we did? We contacted the administration. Exactly. And you all provided it. And you know right. what I also know? Is that if there were left of center groups asking for that data, you would have provided it. Because absolutely. you took that oath to do that. That's what's missing in this administration. That's that's absolutely correct. And I can tell you, it's factual. You can go back, you can see the logs. We were open. It didn't matter what side of the aisle you for, were from, what organization you were. We were very open and transparent with that information. I'll give you another quick, quick stat. 600,000. That's the number of gotaways in the first 12 months of this administration who broke into our borders and evaded apprehension. How many individuals from this administration have mentioned that to the American people? Zero. Zero. I can't think of a single Zero. Has yeah. not been mentioned. Yeah, it's sad. Well, let's try, if we can, to inject a little bit of optimism. <laughs> it's hard. It's going to be hard it's, for it, me, Kevin. It's hard. <laughs> well, don't do it in a fake way. You know we don't do that. Of course. <laughs> yeah, okay. But let's fast forward a little bit, and let's let's um, project that there's going to be a conservative majority in both houses of Congress. So there's a little more power for people like Congressman Babin and others who are interested in fixing this problem. What's the first step that needs to be taken by them to repair the damage by the administration? Look, and, and I don't mean this in a flip way. Yeah. They, they have to return to the Trump error policies. Yeah. They have to take the, the some pages from that playbook that was effective. Like, for example, the Remain in Mexico program. Of the vast network of tools, authorities, and policy we have, that was a game changer. It closed one of the most significant loopholes we had. That being, if you entered our, uh, our borders illegally as a family, that was your passport. That was your ticket in the United States never to be heard from again. Congress needs to mandate that that program be reinstituted. If you do that, by February 2020, we saw a reduction of 75% mm -hmm. of illegal immigration from that one policy alone. And look, and when I went, and the reason why this is important, one of many reasons, is that, it, again, this is about border security. But when you open your borders up to this massive amount of illegal immigration, it pulls border patrol resources off their NASA security mission right. to, to, to be a travel agency. And large area of the borders go wide open, unsecured, unmonitored. And that's where the criminal cartels are getting other stuff uh, coming across the border, including drugs. Last question, and it, it's a practical question. Often hear from people in this audience, from, from people around the country, I know you travel and hear this too. They, they love the research and analysis that we provide at Heritage. They often ask, well, what do you want us to do about it? And, and this is not a question about political action. It's a question about practical action. So say someone's been watching this, this interview. They really understand your expertise, understand the, the political reality we're in, but they also know that they have the power of the vote. And so... Would you suggest to them, among other things, that as they're talking to candidates, for especially for congressional seats, even if they seem to be conservatives, that they focus on this issue? Are there other things, practical steps that individual Americans can do to help them feel like maybe they're going to affect change in, in a really good way? Yeah, I think probably there's three things that come to mind. Mm -hmm. First, the, the national election. So the, the elections in this November, it matters. Right. But that's not it, yeah. right? So you can't put all of our eggs uh, in that basket. You can't put all your eggs mm -hmm. in that basket. Uh, because, let's again, I'm trying to be positive, but i got to be real here. Let's not forget the first two years under the Trump administration. He had the White House, the Senate, and the House, and they still failed to pass a single piece of meaningful legislation. So I'm not putting us all on Democrats. That's right. Right? And so we can't put all our eggs in that basket. So until then, I say get yourself educated. Get yourself uh, aware of actually what's going on. Tune in to, to places like Heritage. Yeah. Right? Go to the website. Get yourself educated. And then— Work in your state. Mm -hmm. I, I, I know it probably gets said probably uh, uh, more times than, than constituents want to hear. Contact your state legislators. Contact your state AG. Contact your governor. Force them to do more. Force all AGs to do what, what AG Paxson is doing. Right. Force all governors to do what Governor Abbott is doing with Operation Lone Star, who's filling that gap. Mm -hmm. That's what they could do today, immediately after they watch this. I'll take that as optimism. Okay. Yeah. Mark Morgan, <laughs> thanks for joining me, man. You bet. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, you bet. Well, that's going to wrap things up for this week's show. I want to thank again my guests, Congressman Brian Babin and former U.S. Customs and Border Protection Commissioner Mark Morgan. Please remember to subscribe to The Kevin Roberts Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. 
And please give the show a five-star rating while you're at it. And you might even tell a friend. Our movement is for everybody. All are welcome. The way to ensure that our government lives by the same principles that we do is to make our movement bigger and give it an even louder voice. Take care, and I'll see you back here next week. Thank you.